Kim from Psych2Go and today we're going to be talking about personality disorders. The personality disorders I'll be discussing in this video are schizoid personality disorder, antisocial personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, and narcissistic personality disorder. So for schizoid personality disorder, to get a diagnosis of this disorder you need to have one, no desire or enjoyment from close relationships, two, to prefer soul activities, three, have little interest in sexual activities with others, four, have little pleasure for activities in general, five, does not have a close friendship, six, praise does not affect them, and seven, have a flattened effect. Schizoid personality disorder has been shown to be related to other mental illnesses as well. One study finding that major depressive disorder in adolescences strongly predicted schizoid personality disorder later on in adult life. It could also be caused by the environment of fetus and habits in the womb. A scientist examined rates of schizoid personality disorder in men who had been born during the Dutch winter famine. It appeared that being exposed to famine and thus having lower quality of nutrition in the womb increased the risks increased the risk of developing schizoid personality disorder. Another study looking into social and environmental factors which increased the risk of schizoid personality disorder found that having a mother who is a perfectionist greatly increased this risk as well. There are few treatments available for schizoid personality disorder. However, due to the overlap of symptoms of schizoid personality disorder with schizophrenia, often antipsychotics are also prescribed to help with these symptoms. Antisocial personality disorder. This disorder is closely linked to psychopathy. For an official diagnosis of this disease, a person must have meet three or more of these criteria. One, failure to conform to social normalities. Two, repeated deception. Three, impulsivity. Four, aggression. Five, disregard for their safety or safety of others. Six, constant irresponsibility. And seven, a lack of remorse. They must also be over the age of 18 years old and have had evidence of conduct disorder before the age of 15, and their occurrences of antisocial behavior must not be due to mania or schizophrenia. ASPD is a personality disorder which receives the most attention, both in media and in research, and this is probably due to its link with criminality. Serotonin is a neurotransmitter that has, plays lots of roles on the brain, including affecting your mood, appetite, sexual desire, and memory. Low levels of serotonin have been implicated in the development of ASPD, especially in those who are fairly young. A study found a high antisocial behavior score in a child exposed to more severe physical punishment and an absent father. They also found having a non-working mother also predicted a higher level for those in a low-income family. This is probably due to the stresses of poverty. Damage or dysfunction to the prefrontal cortex means the individual cannot make moral or social judgments. Therefore, it could possibly also be linked to damage in the prefrontal cortex of childhood because that kid could have possibly never developed moral judgment in the normal way and thus have developed ASPD. Often treatment for the disorder is given in a prison setting due to the link of criminality of this disease, even though not all patients with this disease are criminals. This leads to problems, however, as the patients may act as if the treatment is working in an attempt to reduce their sentence. Borderline personality disorder. People with BPD are said to have very black and white thinking and often have other disorders or symptoms such as depression, anxiety. Those with a diagnosis of BPD firstly may have impairments in self-functioning, either through their identity or in self-direction. And this often means that they have problems with who they are. Secondly, there may be impairments in relationships, either due to deficits in empathy or intimacy, or they may also intensely fear abandonment. Thirdly, there may be a negative effect characterized by unstable emotional experiences, anxiousness, separation anxiety, or depression. And fourthly, there may be deficits in disinhibition characterized by impulsivity or risk-taking, which can lead to rash decisions. Studies have found that about 65% of BPD is due to genetics. It is also very strongly linked to childhood abuse and particularly sexual childhood abuse. Psychotherapy is generally the primary treatment used. Generally, medication will not be used to treat these core problems, but can be used to treat the related symptoms such as depression and anxiety. Narcissistic Personality Disorder this is essentially an extreme version of egocentricism. The criteria for diagnosis of NPD are as following. 
one, have an impairment in self-identity or self-direction and interpersonal functioning, empathy or intimacy. Two, pathological personality traits such as grandiosity or attention seeking. Three, these impairments must be stable across time. Four, these impairments must not be due to social norms or a development stage. And finally, number five, these impairments must not be due to drugs or any other medical condition. Clearly, having NPD would affect someone's lives negatively, as they would struggle both internally and with their external relationships. There are eight possible factors during childhood which could lead to NPD forming in adulthood. These are, one, an oversensitive temperament at birth, two, being given excessive admiration and not realistic feedback, three, the child receiving excessive praise or criticism, four, the child is overindulged, and overvalued by the parent. Five, the child is perceived by the parent as having exceptionally good looks or abilities. Six, emotional abuse. Seven, unreliable caregiving from the parents. And finally, eight, learning maladaptive behaviors from peers or parents. It could also be due to brain abnormalities. It has been found that those with NPD have gray matter abnormalities in their left anterior insula. It is unknown whether this abnormality is due to the disease or causes the disease, however. Thank you so much for watching, guys. That's the end of this video. I hope that this video taught you some things about personality disorders and also that you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to Psych2Go's channel. Make sure also to subscribe to my channel as well. I will have the link on the screen and in the description box. See you guys next time. Bye!